Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on archiving your Final Cut Pro projects. You know, as we move into tapeless video, archiving is harder, and more expensive, and more confusing than ever before. One of the key points that I want to make over the course of this conversation is that the files that we need to archive are not always the same format as the files that we need for editing. In editing, we need files that provide speed and quality and efficiency. But in archiving, our goals are different. We need quality and longevity. So the goal of this session is to answer questions and provide guidance on how to archive video projects. However, again, as I've been talking to people and researching this session, archiving technology is very much in flux. Prices and gear are focused on the high-end corporate market and are only just starting to provide reasonably priced solutions for the small video business. What I'm going to cover today are some key definitions, not too many, there's exactly two. Getting organized for archiving, which is really quite straightforward. Discussing the pros and cons of the different hardware options that are out there. Discussing software options. Show you how to use Final Cut Pro's Media Manager safely, because it's not a friendly part of the application. And then I've got a whole flock of questions and answers that I want to go through. First, I want to differentiate between backup and archiving. Backup means making copies of a current project to protect against data loss during post-production. Archiving, on the other hand, is retaining all project files for future reuse long after a project is completed. Personally, I define archiving to mean the ability to access files 10 to 25 years after the end of a project. Now, it would be great to say I want to archive for 100 years or 200 years. It's great to say, but it's just not possible. The longest reasonable window that I can see us archiving for before all of our technology fails to work is about 20, 25 years. So videotape, 20 to 25 years. Anything we talk about now, 20 to 25 years. You can want a longer window. I just don't think technology is going to make that possible. Not that we won't have technology in 25 years, but technology 20 years in the future will be as radically different as technology today is from 25 years ago. There's just not going to be ways that we can connect to technology that's that old. For backup, it helps to keep all of your project files in a single master folder. Then, just back up the project folder. And most of the time, I do my backups of the project folder to a CD because my projects are really, really tiny. It's the media that's really big. For me, I, I back up my media to another hard disk, and I back up my project files generally to a CD, simply because CDs are easy, and I'm just protecting myself in case of a crash during post-production. However, for archiving, you'll need to use Media Manager to consolidate all of your project and media files. The problem is that Media Manager is not the most reliable part of Final Cut Pro, nor is it the most understandable. So I'll show you how to use this part of the program a little later in this presentation. I want to talk about the hardware options that we have, hard disks and RAIDs, optical media, and tape drives. The advantages to hard drives and RAIDs are that they're inexpensive to purchase, they hold a vast amount of data, and they easily attach to all Macintoshes using a wide variety of connections, everything from USB up to, to eSATA and MiniSAS. But the disadvantage of hard drives is that there's a limited number of hard drives that can be attached simultaneously to each Mac. The general limit for firewire drives is five. And the reason is FireWire is a very chatty protocol. The more FireWire devices you attach to your Macintosh, the slower the overall data transfer rate. They're all sort of sharing and swimming in the same pool. So the more hard disks that are attached to the bus, the slower the overall performance in aggregate of all the devices. Also, a hard drive or a RAID has a very high cost to store a gigabyte when you compare it to, say, the cost of purchasing optical media or the cost of purchasing tape. Hard disks that are turned off and stored are known to lose data after two to four years of power off storage. This is an anomaly called bit flux, which I've written about over the last couple of years. The other problem we've got with hard drives are ones that we've, we've seen over the years that the protocols are no longer supported. In terms of connections, think about SCSI, not the, the ultra SCSI we work with now, but the 25-pin SCSI that first show up on the Macintosh, or parallel drives on PCs, or serial drives on the Macintosh. I mean, cast your mind back. Do you remember jazz drives or zip drives? 
SideQuest drives, even floppy disks, all of these media used to be able to attach to our computer, but they don't attach anymore.